topic for today's uh, podcast is physics of dual energy CT. What I want to discuss today is uh, what is dual energy CT and how is dual energy CT done and where is dual energy CT thriving. This is a two-part series. The first part is what I'm going to discuss in this in this podcast and the second part will follow up on some of the advantages and limitations and uh, about dual energy CT in general. So in principle, the dual energy CT means a CT that uses two X-ray photon spectrum to create images. And the main goal is to enable differentiation and classification of tissue composition. So basically able to identify subtle differences in the tissues based on the attenuation properties of these tissues and by using two different energies. So dual energy CT is often called spectral CT. Even though spectral CT in reality means it's of a multi-energy CT. But for now, uh, dual energy CT is also called a spectral CT. And then the idea now is, the purpose of this discussion is to see how dual energy is achieved. That is the generation of two X-ray photon spectrum is achieved which varies among different CT vendors. Each vendors have taken different path to achieve the dual energy spectrum and that's going to be discussed in this broadcast. Here's the principle of dual energy CT. So dual energy CT can be thought of as follows. It allows for material separation of different composition. For example, shown here is the separation between iodine and bone. Between iodine and bone, at two different energies, there is a wide difference in the attenuation coefficient and it's in fact it's quite large for iodine compared to calcium. So, in a system introducing iodine and achieving with a dual energy capability, we can separate iodine pixels much greater than the calcium and other tissues. And that's the principle behind dual energy CT because the unique absorption properties of two materials such as iodine and calcium permits their material cal calcification or classification and that's exploited by achieving in dual energy CT. In fact, the mathematics work worked out back in 1976 itself. This is one of the classic paper by Alvarez and Mikowski giving a, a mathematical description of energy selective reconstruction in CT. This was published a few years after the CT was developed back in 1974. So the theory has been put forward even long time ago, but it has not been possible to achieve on, a, on the regular CT scanner because the difficulty in separating the two energies. And that to some extent has become more practical with the dual energy CT techniques. So in this particular publication, the author discusses how material decomposition of, of any particular material can be separated with two different known material, and a combination of those two and the attenuation properties, thereby we can separate the ob uh, materials based on their composition. There are a variety of ways one can achieve dual energy CT now. In fact, each of the four major vendors have taken different path to achieve the dual energy CT technique. The among the methods for obtaining dual energy CT we can broadly classify into four different types. One is the single source with fast KV switching. Second, single source with dual detector layers. Number three, dual source with dual detector arrays. Number four, simply doing a dual scans with two set at two different KV settings. So let me start with the very first one, that single source with fast KV switching. GE Healthcare has chosen this path wherein they are ex using an existing CT scanner, a multi-detector CT scanner such as 64 or wide detector CT, where the source is a single X-ray source. However, the the dual energy is achieved by by fast by switching the tube voltage very fast at each, at each each point. Basically, 
um, a fast switching between the 80 and 140 T voltage generates two energy X-ray spectrum as shown in this in this um, drawing. This will provide since you are using two different um, tube voltage, the system automatically slightly varies the tube on uh, the exposure time between the two sphere two energy beam. So since the since X-ray tube current is not varied in this situation, 65 percent of the time the system uses a 80 kV acquisition and while 30 percent 5 percent of the time it uses 140 kV and the way it is achieved is at each instant the tube voltage is switched between 80 and 140 and two different spectrum uh, passes through the object and arrives at the detector. So basically uses a single x-ray source but with fast kV switching you are able to achieve dual energy principle. The main advantage of this particular technique is it seemed to, it has a very good temporal resolution because the two data sets are obtained simultaneously. It is in the same anatomical location every data entry coming out of the uh, to the detector is arising from the same anatomical area so that provides a good temporal resolution. The other advantage of this technique is the full field of view is achievable for image analysis by means on a regular CT scanner the field of view the maximum field of view is about 50 centimeters slightly smaller than the actual gantry opening and that is possible um, with even with the dual energy technique because it is the same x-ray tube now been switching simultaneously fastly at each point therefore the full field of view is av available for image analysis. Some of the limitation is one of the limitation of this particular technique is there can be a spectral overlap possible because at every instant two energy beams are coming out and there can be some slight uh, spectrum um, overlaps. So how does it work? For example here the shown is the diagram a difference between polychromatic versus monochromatic imaging. What it means is like in general CT scans we use Bremstrong radiation which means it is composed of various X-ray beam. So here um, what is possible is like on this particular graph shown the gray and the dark blue of two different energy spectrum of obtained at two different kV, kilo voltage. So the spectrum from 140 kV is shown in the um, gray color which the peak is the peak energy is 140 kV but average energy is much less than that and the dark purple is the spectrum due to 80 kV beam. So the kV defines the upper limit of the x-ray for a polychromatic x-ray beam whereas now you can actually create a monochromatic energy which can be specified at a particular energy and that is can be achieved with these two energies. A combination of these and a two spectrum uh, can can then lead to reconstructing an image in a particular energy range, and that's what is done in the dual energy CT reconstruction. The second type of energy, um, second type of um, method used by another vendor is the single source with dual detector layer. Philips Healthcare System has adapted or developing this methodology where they use the same single source but have modified the detector array with two scintillation layers arranged one top one atop of other to receive separate or separate the energies into high and low energy spectrum. So basically here we call them as a sandwich detector the bottom layer is captures the high energy data of the X-ray spectrum coming out of the patient and the top detector captures the low energy X-ray data. So as shown here this is the uh, image of a um, the detector by this Philips system called as a spectral CT where this is a yttrium based scintillator the top layer will absorb the low energy X-rays of X-ray beam coming out of the patient and the bottom one 
absorbs the high energy one. So therefore, we can achieve images of dual energy, two different energy ranges by using this combination detector. The advantage of this one is, it is an all-in-one scan. It provides ability to get conveniently conventional anatomical information. You can also color code and all in one single scan. So it's a single scan, but the detector instead of well, a single layer detector, it's a dual layer detector separating the X-ray spectrum into low and high energy which can be separately combined together for reconstructing into mono-energetic X-ray images. The third type of methodology of obtaining dual energy CT is the dual source with dual detector arrays. This is the method ap adapted by Siemens Healthcare wherein they have a system which has two different X-ray tube positioned at orthogonal distance 90 degree um, opposite to which is two detector arrays. Therefore, this principle has two X-ray tubes with two detector arrays. So, simply by setting up each X-ray tube at a different KV, we can achieve dual energy easily. So, it can acquire two different image data sets simultaneously and by setting up two different X-ray tube, allowing beam filtration and tube current adjustments to optimize the image quality. In this particular setup, the temporal resolution is very high, but it's offset by quarter of the rotation time because each of the spectrum coming out is, even though it's from the same anatomical area, can, they can be offset by this 90 degree separation between the two X-ray tube. The, one of the other limitations as of right now is the second detector array is slightly smaller than the primary detector array therefore the limited therefore the field of view is slightly limited in this particular acquisition of the dual energy ct acquisition this is an inside photograph of a ct gantry of this dual energy uh, scanner which has two detectors positioned at 90 degree opposite to the two x-ray tube and this has been this is one of the um, advantages is very convenient to set because each tube can be set up at a separate tube voltage, therefore automatically obtaining two X-ray beam of different energies. So in real in principle here shown here, the dual energy images are reconstructed at 50 and 80 kV. So if we reconstruct image at 50 and 80 kV, as shown on this spectrum here, the difference between the attenuation difference between the iodine and calcium or water is very high at low energy, slightly less at high energy, but this differences is easily exploited. In fact, the iodine demonstrate greater decrease in attenuation than calcium at higher energy, whereas attenuation of water remains more or less constant. So the typical flow diagram for dual energy CT protocols is as follows. So, this diagram showing the dual energy CT obtained with a dual source CT scanner. So, in the principle behind here is like tube A is set at 140 kV, tube B is set at 80 kV and the energies then are mixed together. You can then you have an advantage of obtaining mixed images by having a weighted sum of two different energy. Therefore, we can have a mixed image at a unique energy either 120 or any one of the spectrum part of it. It also allows a three material decomposition therefore in some studies such as three phase um, uh, studies a virtual non-contrast image can be obtained eliminating an additional scan by this particular methodology. Again shown here is um, the three material composition between the saw bone, soft tissue and iodine and how it is achieved by obtaining a spectrum of dual energy spectrum. So in, in summary, um, the dual energy CT technology is achieved by following May. One is that by having two X-ray tube such as the dual source and with two different detectors or Second methodology is to have a same single source of X-ray tube 
but with the capability to st rapidly switch the kV between 140 and 80 kV to uh, in order to uh, obtain dual energy spectrum and the third method is to have the same x-ray source but two different x-ray detector layer separating between low and high energy and the fourth conventional method is simply scan the same anatomical area twice by setting the technique with two different kV settings. This is an example of the data set that can be obtained with the dual energy CT. An example shown here is like by once obtaining raw data at two different energies, user can then reconstruct data sets of all these variety images. On the top panel is two different energies obtained at 140 kV with Sumerian filter and 100 kV image. Then it can be combined together to obtain what is called as quasi monoenergetic images at 140 kV or one can obtain a blended image, obtain an image with a bone removal, color coded and so forth. On the bottom panel, the, the middle image is a virtually unenhanced image after iodine sub subtraction. So all these things is possible once you have these dual energy spectrum images. So the advantage of dual energy CT is it's a sought after publication possible due to technological advances. It has a potential to reduce metal artifact. It has a better delineation of structures and it is quite effective in differentiating structures, effective diagnosis and follow up of treatment. Shown here are some examples of dual energy uh, um, CT application which has captured the attention of the users. Among them is one of the widely used to energy CT application is the gout application. It's a gout is a type of arthritis occurs when uric acid crystals build up on the joints. It's mostly commonly found in men and risks increases with age. In fact, about 4% or nearly 8.3 million of Americans are affected by gout. And the diagnosis of gout becomes difficulty with the regular CT scans, but it is very uniquely demonstrated with the um, with the dual energy CT, as shown in this panel, where the the differentiation of this tissue composition by the dual energy spectrum clearly separates the gout um, acquisition, the 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 prevalence of gout in these particular images or the, the prevalence of uh, uric acid build up on these bones images therefore helping to easy diagnosis using dual energy CT. Another application is which is widely used is the bone removal application. Um, the dual energy CT shown here is a CT and geography of a law runoff um, for a and then shown here is the bone removal on two different situation which provides the accuracy much more effective in terms of clinical workflow. These are some of the unique examples. There are many more examples where the dual energy CT is finding to its niche application in the field. The next part of the discussion will be on why is it then dual energy CT is not used widely. This will be discussed in the next podcast.